Today I want to talk about a GUI framework for Go that you might not have heard of. I didn't know about it uh, until very recently, and that is Cogent Core. If you look here on the left on this side, that's the homepage, Cogent Core org. It looks a bit uh, weird because I think this page is programmed in Cogent Core directly because Cogent Core can also output to the web. I think it's using WebAssembly, but it's a bit uh, large. You can see here the letters are a bit large. Let's uh, go to the GitHub repository, and that's not here. So here it is. If you look at this on GitHub, it's a framework similar to uh, Fine. It renders directly on Canvas. It uh, requires Seago, so it's not completely Seago free, but it renders its own widgets. And it's made by uh, a number of people, some of them even gray bearded uh, scientists who use this for their own visualization. And I was a bit surprised when I looked at it because it's quite powerful and quite evolved by now. And let me show you the demo. So this is the demo on my system. Let's remove this window. Okay, so you have the intro screen, you have an overview of widgets. It has text. You can use different fonts, of course. It has all kinds of styled buttons. As you can see here, the number of styled buttons is quite nice. It's quite suitable for mobile development. You have buttons with integrated icons. You can use your own icons, but it also has a large list of icons to choose from in this style, one colored style. It's not, I think, directly material design, as you can see here. It also has this elevated design that gives it a 3D effect. I like the round buttons, by the way. You can also have just text and then the button appear when you hover the mouse over it. and I think that looks really nice. So input fields, they are similar to how fine looked a while ago. I'm not particularly fond of this focus underlining instead of having it framed. And the reason why I don't like it is if you have longer text fields, multi-line text fields, and they become really large, this looks just wrong. And the guy who makes uh, fine uh, fixed that but uh, they haven't fixed it. So some people really like that apparently, but it's only good for small forms. It's not so good once your text fields become larger. It looks really bad then. But it has all kinds of text fields, actually more than Fine has uh, out of the box. So you have, for instance, here a search field, you have a password field with this little eye icon. That's something that user Expect, users expect nowadays, and they don't get it in every framework. You have here fields that combine entry with these kind of buttons. You have selection fields. You can select out of a list in different ways. You have toggles, of course. Uh, what is this? A chip. Yeah, that has a little toggle in, built in. That's nice. Then you have different kinds of checkboxes with an indeterminate state even. All right. You have sliders of all kinds. You even have these semicircles, which is rare. Then you have different dialogues. These are painted over one main window, as is usual in these frameworks, but that's not too bad. They are spacious, and that's quite nice, because that can sometimes be a problem. I mean, can, you can see here the window layout is not at all like the window layout in the platform. So this is a little drag handle. Uh, there is no title bar, so to say. We have a full window. Okay, that's nice. New window. That looks ordinary that looks nice so this is really good you even have these mobile interface elements like these snack bars and error displays you sometimes get at the bottom what you don't have is some fancy um some fancy transitions here uh, in if you have a flutter app 
for instance, it would be with an animation. They don't have animation here. But you can also make a really large window. Why is this a full window a standalone that opens on the same window? Yeah. So you can have multiple windows, as you can see here. One window, two windows. That's nice, actually. And you can resize in different ways. Now, always important, text editors. And I was positively surprised about that as well, because these text editors are quite powerful. What they don't have is, I think, inline images, but they have line numberings and they have syntax styling. So they are like editors. They are not for word processing. You can't have different fonts within a paragraph, for instance. Maybe, well, you can have definitely have italic and bold and different colors. Now, I don't know about the background color. It might be possible. I, I haven't checked that. Could be important for certain applications, so you need to check check out whether it has background, background colors if you need that. But other than that, they claim that the syntax coloring is quite performant, and I've, I haven't tested it, but it looks uh, really good. Okay, then it has displays for different types of collections we have these different types of menus again here the layout might not be to everyone's taste you have for instance this selection is a little bit smaller than the menu window so that is not as you have it on most platforms but these are small details and you will likely not get these small details right if you need to have them exactly like you would expect on the platform or you will have to twiddle a lot, but it's usually in these kind of frameworks. You even have a table with these kind of interface elements. You have different kinds of lists. Again, I'm not a big fan of this line at the bottom. That shouldn't be displayed. Maybe you can switch it off. And I would like to have a focus rectangle instead of a focus line, because these focus lines are, in my opinion, confusing users but you can have a list here and hopefully it's performant i have not tested how performant these lists are probably all in memory and might not be that performant for large lists you can have lists side by side here and you can have full-fledged tables that's quite nice if you look at it you can change elements here select say an icon yeah, double click and then it changes to the icon here that's quite nice so that's a button of course layout that's not optimal as you can see here uh, that's a bit ugly uh, that this user interface element is on the left side it should be centered at least all of them should be centered maybe this is something that can be changed easily but there are these kind of small layout let's say imperfections but as you can see it's very suitable for mobile development and it compiles to mobile so and it's kind of usable for desktop i would say pretty cool that is also cool that is a performant tree hopefully these can be changed i assume if not that's always a problem if you have these uh, elements because sometimes you want them um, to be for instance icons sometimes you want them to be for instance a folder icon that is then opened if you open it things like that so it really depends of the use of the tree and for some reason people who make these frameworks think that could be a generic uh, in element here like this button but maybe it can be changed because it seems to be just a button right they can be collapsed and they can be expanded that's clear from the demo here yeah it's pretty cool too really interesting value bindings like in fine you can bind uh, the value to some variable and then if you change it uh, the variable changes that's quite nice as a shortcut and also to make less it less error prone so that's a nice feature to have i, I usually don't use bindings i don't know why I prefer to do things manually. Now, in terms of validation, I don't know what they use, what they have. Maybe you have to write your own, or it, they have something built in. You would have to check. I haven't checked that. And you can change a lot of layout 
features here. So there's no doubt that you can change the global font, the text font, um, units, contexts, and scaling. So that should allow you to use that on high DPI displays and get the right scaling factor. I don't know what they do in terms of that. This is always a bit of a problem, but it's certainly something that you can overcome in these kind of frameworks. In the worst case, you have to calculate the scaling factor manually because obviously you can read out these scaling factors on each platform. Although, to be fair, on Linux, it can be quite hard. There's this experimental scaling with uh, which Fune has, or Fine has some real problems uh, because it's not easy to read out. So there are sometimes scaling features with a graphics card in Linux systems that are hard to deal with because where and how the scaling is calculated is underdocumented. But once you get the scaling factor, you can fix these problems too. So I think this is pretty cool. It's a pretty large framework and I myself was surprised uh, until recently when I found out that this exists because it's not one of the frameworks uh, talked about very much. It's under a permissive BSD3 clause. So it's something to check out if you want a native solution and you don't like Fine for some reasons, or you want to have an alternative to Fine with a completely different standard layout, with theming and dark and light themes and all the common user interface elements, I think you should check it out. And yeah, let me know what you think about this. I didn't know about this up until recently, uh, but you can see here it's under active development. Yeah, last commit is three days ago, even on the main level so there is development here and it even has a way to show videos which is quite rare and platform support is macOS, windows linux ios and android and web if you use packages that will compile to web assembly i suppose right so that's interesting and that's it for today and see you next time when i talk about another gui framework bye Thank <laughs> you.